Welcome to my passion project, the Wine Find Talks. This is where I share one wine that I love, why I love it, and then we taste it. So, let's talk. Today's wine is a 2018 Joel Gott Zinfandel from sunny California. Joel Gott may be best known for his widely available Cabernet Sauvignon, but his Zinfandel is what put him on the map. About 25 years ago, Joel maxed out his credit cards and bought several tons of Amador County Zinfandel from a family friend and grape grower, and he made wine with it. He made a Zinfandel with the help of his then girlfriend and winemaker, Sarah, who he married the next year, and they still make the wine together. That first wine, a Zinfandel, was praised by three important publications, Wine Spectator, the New York Times and Wine Advocate. That was 1996. From there, he's broadened his range of wines and he's now a very respected winemaker in California. And of course, he was born in Napa and he comes from a long line of winemakers. But Joel has a special talent for making delicious Zinfandel and that talent I think shines in the glass. So let's taste. Immediately notice the depth of color. That's a testament to concentration. Zinfandel is a, you know, it's a very pigmented grape variety, but it's also dense and concentrated and creates full-bodied fruit. So in the glass, it's very deep, very dark, opaque in the center, um, almost black, um, and it tapers to a very, very narrow rim. Very deep, very dense. And on the nose, wonderful, just so heady wonderful sense of blackberry and dark chocolate and poached plum, maybe plum puree. And there's a hint of burnt nut because this was, uh, it spent some time in French oak, as well as vanilla because that's a new oak aging too. Wonderful, almost a creamy scent, not confected at all, lovely. And on the palate, mm. Wonderful, just so mouth filling, and yet so juicy. There's a spike of mouth watering acidity, keeps the fruit, which is very ripe, up and sprightly, and it scrapes the palate clean, leaving it really refreshed. This is a quenching wine, a wine that you can serve even in the summer, despite it being full and rich, and I love that, and it's because of that juiciness. Now this alcohol level is 14, I think it's 14.1% alcohol, so it's quite full-bodied, um, and yet there is no heat at the back of the throat or the palate at all. The heat, um, the alcohol doesn't show through, and that's because there is so much fruit. But this is an iron fist in a velvet glove. The fruit completely cloaks that structure, and the balance is impeccable. Balance is, you know, the best wines are beautifully balanced, and Joel just nails that with this wine. Another sip. Mm. As I said, the texture is incredible. Crushed velvet, wonderful, and it sweeps in with initial pristine fruit and then quickly fans out with all sorts of complex complexity that's echoing everything we found on the nose and it lingers it arcs and then it tapers and smudged into the finish is a whole bunch of other flavors I'm getting coal I'm getting slate I'm getting pencil shavings I'm getting a touch of almond on and on and on, milk chocolate, lovely. Now this is a bone dry wine. It only has one gram of residual sugar. So bone dry and yet there's so much ripe fruit that it's sweet fruited in the center and such a pleasure to, to uh, enjoy and you can enjoy it with food. In fact, I would love this with a grilled, like a char grilled burger or grilled ribs, fantastic. Or add a little smoky nuance for a really easy sort of barbecue feel with barbecued potato chips. Love it, because that smoky nuance would just set off everything found in this wine. This is a fantastic wine for the money, and that's what I wanted to talk about. <music>